In this demonstration, I'm going to show you a couple of control structures commonly used in Java. We're going to work with both the while statement and the if statement. This is a very simple application where we're getting input from the user and giving them feedback based upon the guess that they give. It's a guessing game where they're trying to guess what number the answer is and we tell them if they're warm, cold, etc. and they keep guessing until they get the correct number. So to do this we're going to need to get input from our user so you'll need to import the Java Utility Scanner package so that we can work with it and get input from our user. Now when we're doing real-life applications we won't be writing things where we're just grabbing things from the user in this format. We're going to ultimately be doing GUI user interfaces for Android. But this gives us something to practice with as we're going through how Java puts together the different control structures. So we have two initial int values. We have guess, which we initialize to zero so that we have a true while statement. And we have answer, which is equal to 42 because that is the answer to life, the universe, and everything. So we're going to get input from the user. We're going to need to use scanner. So we're creating a new scanner with system.in. And that's used to get input from the user when we're in this simple interface here working right in the programming environment. Well, guess is not equal to answer. And we've set these up where they're initialized. So we start not equal to answer, ensuring that it will execute at least once. We have system out print line enter a whole number between 1 and 100. Now, ideally, we would be doing some error checking. That's a little beyond what I want to do today. Today, we're just learning how to use if statements. So we set guess equal to what the user inputs through the keyboard. Then we're going to get a value, which is math.absolute. And notice we didn't need to import math. It's just part of the Java package. But we do need to specifically call math.abs. And that gives us the absolute value, how far the two numbers are away from each other. So if we put in, if the number returns negative, we just get the absolute value, how far away it is from the answer. And if value is less than 10, we're going to do a system out print line warm. And this is sort of like a funnel. It's not going to hit value is less than 20. We're not going to get warm and cool because it's an else if. So if it's 15, this won't trigger, but this will, and then it will stop. It won't trigger if value is less than 30, even though 15 is less than 30. That's why we're using else if. And then the last else, there is no if. This is just anything that is greater than 30. The system is going to do a print line of freezing. So it's warm, cool, cold, freezing. When they get it correct, they'll get the feedback of that is correct, the number is 42. So let's run it to see how it works. So it should ask us for a number between 1 and 100. Now this is sort of miserable because they do know what the answer is. It would be more fun if I put in a random number generator. But I'm just trying to show you the if statement here. And so I'm going to put in 50. That's warm. And I'm going to put in 41, and that's warm. We could do something more complicated to give warmer or colder. I'm not going that far. And I can put in 42. I know that's the answer. And it tells you that is correct. The number is 42. So the key takeaways from this are you can use absolute value if you don't want to have a negative or positive number. You can use a while statement to force an action to keep happening until a trigger changes. And when you're using if else, that ensures that you're only getting the exact trigger that you want so that you aren't going to hit every single if statement. So this is your example on simple if else and while statements in Java.